that you are the good God. You will never share your glory with anyone. You are the jealous God. We acknowledge that. And we take that into account, Father. That in this side, we'll be very careful. Lord, when we give him glory and honor, we will always give glory and honor unto the Lord. Because the Lord is our creator. Father, accept the word we're going to share this morning. We're going to read before you and before your people. Let the word make a mark that will never be erased. And let this word be a grand work inside of us. Let, let it be a seed that will germinate and will build a foundation in the love of our children. Amen. Lord, we pray, not only our children, but even us, we will never forget all you have done for us. Amen. But the reason of the anointing is that every burden will be removed and every yoke will be destroyed. Everyone sick in this house, Lord, who has entered this place, they will go out healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anyone, Father God, who feel oppressed, who feel low, Lord, they shall go high in the name of Jesus. Amen. I rebuke every insanity. Amen. I rebuke every, Father God, every laziness, every kindness. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I declare anyone who has a pain on the back, receive the heat of the Lord Amen. and be healed in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Father God, that all our sisters and all our brothers in this house, we live long Amen. and we enjoy a good life. Amen. May you remember the covenant of longevity Amen. we have made with you in this house in the name of Jesus. Amen. We give you all the glory Amen. and all the honor. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's open our Bible in 1 Corinthians 15. We're going to read verse 51 to 55. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 55. Remember, we still carry on our teaching, building and grounding in the divine foundation. Building and grounding in the divine foundation. We have spoken about the different foundations so far, repentance, faith, baptism. But today we're going to look at the, the, three, the, the three foundations which are the laying of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and the eternal judgment. So I'm going to put together the resurrection of the dead and the eternal judgment together so we can understand what is important that we have a foundation in our life. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Shall we all stand and read together 1 Corinthians 15 and 51? Brothers and sisters, those of you uh, uh, watching from home, may I also ask you please to stand as a sign of reverence and gratitude to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let this word, lead this word together, standing also as a mark of respect. Shall we read? Ready? Read. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the drinking of an hour, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must be of incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought apart. The saying that is written, death is to swallow up in victory. O oh, death, where is that thing? O oh, grave, where is that victory? Praise the name of the Lord. If you can go with me now also to the book of Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, we're just going to read verse 4 and 6. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4 and 6. Shall we read loud together? Revelation 20, which is the last book. 
Revelation chapter 20, verse 4 and 6. Shall we all read loud together? Ready? Read. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus Christ, and for the word of God, which I do not worship the beast, neither his image, neither that I have received his mark upon the forehead or in the hand. And they live and reign with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. That is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that had part to the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign to him a thousand years. Father, we praise you, we give you praise and honor. This is your word. Let it sink inside of your people. Amen. And let a mark be made that will never be erased. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we be seated? Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. Brethren, uh, for the past two weeks, I've been talking about divine foundation or Christian foundation. Today we're going to look at the last part, which is a part of three, which will talk about the three remaining foundations in the life of a believer. We as believers must understand that there are things we need to lay foundation upon. Because if we don't have foundation on those things, we will not be different as other sinners or Gentile or unbelievers. It's important that in everything you do, you have good foundation. You, you, you depart from good foundation. Let me make it very simple for you. And for myself, if every day your children return from school, you sit them down to do homework, and you do it for the next six, seven years, when your children go to secondary education or they go to university, they will not struggle to do homework because you've already built them up. They've grown up for seven years knowing that they have to read, they have to write, they have to think, they have to do coursework, they have to do what is expected for them to do as the school requires. And they build that foundation in them that they will not struggle when you say go and do your homework or sit down and do the homework. But if you don't do that with your own children, you will find that when they go into secondary education and you tell them to do homework, they will present an attitude of disobedience. They will disobey you. Why? Because you are instilling in them something that they don't have a structure. They don't have a solid base on it. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Your children, my children should not struggle to read or to write. I was surprised last week I saw a man 40 years old saying that he can't read and he can't write. I said, excuse me. What do you mean that you can't read, you can't write? I said, nobody has sent me to school. I spent all my life in jail. I said, but my brother, have you ever heard about adult education? He said, no. I said, there's still an opportunity. You are 40 years old. If you go into adult education and you educate yourself, in the next five years, you could be able to go to university as a mature student. In fact, by the time you reach 50, you should be qualified with degree qualification. 
Why this person at 40 is unable to read and write because he didn't have any good foundation? It's like you meet with certain people, they have a foul mouth. Foul mouth means that the mouth will by the swear all the time. We call it foul mouth. When you have a foul mouth, you will not know how to talk to people. Every little thing will be F or B. You will not have respect even to yourself because you will even swear at yourself. It is important that my brothers and sisters, we all grow with the foundation. Pay your children have to grow with a good foundation. The Lord Jesus Christ has to be a firm foundation. And you can still in them also have the foundation which are in line with the word of God. They grow with that. They have to learn to share. They have to learn to love. They have to learn to be patient. They have to learn to respect. They have to learn to listen. Because if your children can't listen, you are shooting yourself. No one will do it for you. All you find out, the school will be writing a report, and at the end they say, we want an educational psychologist to come and see this child. Something must be wrong. There's no wrong in it. There's nothing wrong with the child. It's because the child has not had the base, the solid base, the structure which he or she should have had when the child was growing up. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Our children react based on what we do not instill in them as they are growing up. Can I hear an amen for that? Amen. So parent, it is our responsibility. It is also my responsibility in this house to lay foundation in your life, even in my own life, that when we know that we have done something wrong, we have to be quick to repent. We have to be quick to abandon the way of sin. We have to be quick to seek God's mercy that we have not behaved the way we should be. And in love, we also, once we repent, as I said to you, repentance is the same coin with faith. You cannot repent and not develop faith. Because when you repent, you abandon the ways of sin and you embrace the ways of the Lord. The way Christ is teaching us. And once you do so, faith begins to grow in you because the Bible said that faith cometh by hearing. And when you hear this word, your faith is building up. And you will never struggle in your life. Because this word will be re reasoning into your ears and you will even hear the sound of this word. That's my job. And I must make sure that you are quick to forgive. Because when you repent, you will not struggle to forgive somebody. You will not say, if I remember what they've done to me, I cannot forgive them. We need to have this foundation. I have this fine foundation since last, the past two weeks. If you look at the screen again, the screen on the, on the screen, it's a foundation is also the basis of groundwork or anything that on which anything stands. By which it is supported. If you give your children the habit of doing homework every evening when they come from school, they begin to stand on that. It will begin to support their learning abilities. It will begin to give them that test that if they don't learn, they're missing something out. It is something when you as a father, as a mother, begin to notice that what you are doing is wrong, you'll be quick to go to your husband, to your wife, and say, my wife, my husband, forgive me, I did wrong. And you abandon that way and seek to live right. Because when you live right, it is for your own good. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Don't think that if you going to go to your wife or to your husband to say that, I'm sorry I did this and I will not do it, 
you are presenting as weak. No. In fact, God strengthened you. Praise the name of the Lord. Like we always see that a free government has its foundation in the choice and consent of the people to be governed. Any government who does not seek that the choices of the people who are going to govern has to emanate freely from people, that government doesn't stand. They will always do wrong. Evil will enter in them. So if we cannot acknowledge that the Christ is the foundation of the church, the church will not stand. I can give an example. If it wasn't for the Lord for this hour, we would have finished long time ago. Long time ago, this ministry would have finished and would have closed the door. Everyone would have taken the side. But it is because of Christ Jesus that we all are together to this day. And I am fully grateful for what the Lord is doing in this hour. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We need a foundation. That foundation will be carried from our children to our grandchildren to our great grandchildren to the entire generation. We know that we do not take what does not belong to us. I do not steal. I do not lie. I do not disobey my father. I do not disobey my mother. I listen to my parents. When they say sit down, I sit down. Because no father or no mother will do wrong to their children because they are the most loved being for them. And the Bible gives us quite a very uh, 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 example. He says, Jesus is saying to people, say, you are evil. You know how to give good gifts. How much more of that? Because it's giving the advantage. The living don't work, but they have food. The bird don't have employment, but food is always there. How much for you? So we have to be responsible for that. We have to make sure that I do not train the multitude to do evil. These are the foundation I'm talking about. These are the values I want you to grow with. It. Wherever you go, people will respect you because when they call you to come and do evil, you say, no, I don't do those things. These are not my values. My father and my mother did not teach me these things. Brothers, those of you watching me from home, I pray that you grab this opportunity that your children will be instilled with values and the characters that will never forget for the rest of their life that if I am who I am, thank God for my father, thank God for my mother. Praise the name of the Lord. Now we're going to explain what Christian means. Christian means that uh, 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 the followers of the uh, worshippers of Christ, and it comes from the Greek word which we call Christianos. Someone who has received Christ and baptized in Christian baptism, we call them Christian. Someone who believes in the teaching of Jesus Christ is a Christian. Someone whom Christianity is the basis of their belief, which is our doctrine, is a Christian. In fact, we were reading this morning in uh, uh, Acts 18, for the first time they call people Christian is in Antioch. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. These are values I keep talking to. These are the solid prayers we have to bear. Everything, my brothers and sisters, on which you can stand, on which you can be supported, is a foundation. And I've said this many times. If this has to stand, to storm, to wind, to uh, anything that can shake it, it doesn't crumble or it doesn't fall or it doesn't uh, 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 become destroyed is because the foundation of this house holds it strong. You also, as you are growing in life, grow with foundation. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And it will be an injustice if our children do not grow with foundation. If we truly love our children, we must instill values on them that will profit them for the rest of their life and they'll carry on passing on on their children, on their children's children, and they can always remember if I am who I am, thank God for my 
Martha. Martha always made sure that we do not go to bed hungry. He made sure that we did our homework. He made sure that we were kept warm. He made sure that we had the same clothes. He made sure that we do not mingle with the people who will spoil us or people who will uh, uh, lead us into wrong ways where we become criminally exploited or we become criminally and sexually exploited. These are our responsibility. And when we do so, God takes the glory and God leads what we require. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The fourth foundation is called the laying of hands. The laying of hands, my brothers, you see many times when we pray in the heart of God, we lay hands on people and we decree, we declare the word of God. This ministration of laying of hands is the transfer of the anointing, is the transfer of power, is the transfer of authority, is the transfer of the thing that we divinely release to resolve the problem the person has. The only way that you find that even in the uh, uh, civil uh, 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 ceremonies or civil uh, 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 manifestations, they will lay hand to declare power or authority on somebody. So the administration of the laying of hand is the transfer of the anointing. It is also known as the transfer of power and authority. And we know the laying of hands is the procedure revealed by the Lord for performing many ministers' ordinances. Ordinances means orders. And we know that when they pray, they will always lay hands. And we know that Jesus Christ in Mark chapter 5, when he was praying for the sick, he laid hands on the sick and the sick was recovered. And we all know that he could not do much work when he laid hands in Nazareth is because of the people and belief. And he ended up by saying that no prophet is with honor in his own heart. And it gives also ministers the ability to be blessed. And those having, uh, and giving other ministers blessing to those having the proper servanthood authority. Bless their hands upon them. And release the oil. I therefore declare from this day forward, you are a deacon. I therefore declare that you are an altar worker. I therefore declare that you are an answer. I therefore declare that you are a, a, a pastor. I therefore declare that you are an apostle or a prophet. So these ministers of your hand, lay your hand, are for you to pass on power and authority. Where do we see that? We see that in Jacob. When Jacob transferred power on the sons of Joseph, Joseph had two sons, which was, uh, one was called Manasseh, which means that uh, the Lord has uh, uh, not forgotten my uh, uh, sorrow, my pain, and then Ephraim. Ephraim means that the Lord has made me fruitful in the land of the living. Because he was uh, in uh, Egypt, and then God blessed him with two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And we see that when he has brought his father from Canaan, before his father died, he said, I want to bless your children. I want to impart the power. I want to impart anointing on your children. And then Joseph brought Manasseh and Ephraim, and Jacob took his right hand. Instead of putting on Manasseh, he put his right hand on Ephraim, and then his left hand on Manasseh. And when Joseph said, Daddy, Manasseh is the elder. He's the eldest, and Ephraim is the I said, I know. Ephraim is the younger, and Manasseh is the younger, but my hand shall bless Ephraim. So the hand of authority was placed on Ephraim. That's where we understand. And we understand that we can find that in Genesis 48, 14 to 19. And we also understand that Paul, the Apostle Peter, sorry, and the Apostle John bestowed the gift of the Holy Spirit by the laying on hands in Acts chapter 8. Remember when people have received the baptism of water, they couldn't speak any uh, 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 tongue, but as soon as John the Apostle and Peter the Apostle lay hands on them in Acts chapter 8, straight away, 
He could start praying in tongues. And I've seen that myself in my life. I'm going to ministries whereby people have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit just by the laying of hands. So the ministration of the laying of hands is a public recognition of believers' call and the gift. And it was a way for the church to demonstrate its commitment to them. The laying of on hand, the laying on of hand is a public recognition of God's call on believers. If we look at the, uh, 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 Act 6 6, if you can put it on the screen, uh, my brother, in Act 6 6, we see here. It reads very simply, whom they set before the apostles and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. This was the Greek and the Hebrews at the time they were giving what we call the ordination of Stephen and the rest. So we have Stephen, a man full of Holy Spirit and full of faith, with uh, Philip, Pocorus, Nicamor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas. These are the people they lay hands on them when there was a problem in the church. They say uh, the the. the the Greek, the, the Greek women were not treated in the same way as the Hebrew women, and the church was in the division. Crisis entered in the church. Then the apostles said, We cannot only preach on the chair. Let name seven people among us who are full of the Holy Spirit and men and who are also full. Of the fear of God. And that's how Stephen was ordained and the rest of them. And that brought peace and order in the church. But before they took office, they laid hands on them, which is the transfer of authority and power. However, the apostle war, we have also to understand that we don't lay hands anyhow. There's a spiritual warning here. When the apostle Paul is warning Timothy that you should not lay hands suddenly without discernment and the Lord guides and direction. He says that in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 20, today, do not lay hands upon anyone to hastily and thereby share responsibility for the sins of others. Keep yourself from sin. Brethren, you will notice that I do not lay hands anyhow. I take my time to lay hands. Because I don't want to lay hands for the sake of laying hands to please anybody. No. I need divine guidance. I need God to let me know that I can lay, I can lay my hand safely on somebody. The way you are, I've just said it to you, the laying on of a hand, as a father and mother, you have to learn to lay hand on your children. When you lay your hand on your children, you have to declare. And remember, whatever you declare on your children will come to pass. Because your mouth has a power. Your mouth will bless and your mouth also will curse. This foundation cannot be laid if the human father and the mother in the house who have been given authority, you learn to learn your hand, lay your hand on your children and decree what you want the children to do. Sisters and brothers, you watching me from home, I want to say to you that this foundation is a crucial, is a key in the life of your children. When you lay your hand and you decree for the future, as long as you become consistent in it, it 
it will come to pass. And your children will be what your mouth has spoken. But I don't want you to use the lay of a hand administration to curse anybody. Do not do it if you are in anger. Do not do it when you don't feel like you're going to do it. Don't do it just to please your flesh, but do it when it's divinely guided in Jesus' name. So it's important that you, before even someone here come and lay hands on your children, you do it yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. It's important that the parents in the house have to learn to lay hands on the children. Before anybody else come and talk to them, unnecessarily uh, stuff to them, you can do that for them. The only time God will use me to lay hands on you and your children is probably to cancel any curse that is in the family line. If you're going to go and see in the book of uh, Genesis, whereby God is using uh, Moses to remove the curse of Jacob placed upon Reuben and Simeon. You remember Reuben and Simeon? Yes. You remember Reuben and Simeon? They were Jacob's first children, first sons from Leah. And they went and slept with the dad's wife who was the uh, a servant of Rachel. Praise the name of the Lord. One of the things I have to say to you here, do not uncover the nakedness of your mother. Because sometimes we go and drink all this umkomoji, uh, uh, and then we forget that it's our mother, it's our sister, and we go and do all kinds of voyeurism. I have learned a 17-year-old young boy Having taken so much drugs, forget that it was his mother sleeping, and when he lay down with the mother and impregnated the mother. We have to stay away like, from those things. And that's what Han did to his mother. Kenneth is a cursed son, a cursed child, because Han went and impregnated his mother, the wife of Noah. Praise the name of the Lord. These things do happen, but we have to be very careful. The fifth and last foundation is the resurrection of the dead. The resurrection of the dead. Mainly, uh, as we read in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, uh, 15, the Bible is telling us that there will come a time in life, there will be a, a change, this corruptible body will become incorruptible. That change will only happen when the first resurrection takes place. And that first resurrection is what people will always call the judgment seat of Christ. I'm going to talk about it here. I'm sure I've always said to you brothers, Whatever you sow in this life, you will reap it. Do not think that God is a fool. Because sometimes we think that nobody is seeing me, I can do whatever I want to do. No. God, the Bible says that God even sees in darkness. He sees even what's going on in the head. God sees that. So we have to be very careful including myself, in what we're doing every day. You cannot go and steal, commit fornication, commit adultery, envy things which you're not supposed to envy, worship evil, bow before graphic images, and you think that you're going to go safe and without being judged of those things, you are deluded and you are deceiving yourself. God said, Thou will never bow before images. Don't think even if the people allow you that from your family you used to 
when you bow before statues, to bow before idols, you will be judged and you will give account of those things. Because now you've come to the knowledge that we should not do those things. So the resurrection of the dead and the eternal life are so connected. Because there will come a time in our life we have to give account of what we've done on earth. Even if you were dead, on that day we will resurrect you. That's why the Bible is saying here there will be a first resurrection. To give account of what you've been doing. If you live only for 60 years on earth, you'll give account of your 60 years. If you live only for 30 years, you'll give an account for 30 years. If you live for 100 years, you'll give account of 100 years. That's why live well with everybody. Live well with your husband. Live well with your wife. Live well with your children. Because we will give an account of what we do. Still not. Anything which is not yours, don't take it. Even if you are lacking your struggle, it's better you ask. But you going in a crafty way, and taking it because this will cost you and can cost the life of your children and your grandchildren. There's a man in the book of Joshua called Achan. Achan went to steal what God has forbidden. Achan was the right hand man of Joshua. Joshua liked Achan so much. But it happens that they went to war with Ahai and they lost. And Joshua was very angry. He went to the Lord and said, Father, how could you allow this small town to defeat the big Israel? He said, because among you there are thieves. I can hear sheep. The noise of sheep. And then God said, he asked God, who is that person? He said, Achan, the man was completely destroyed. Imagine the body of somebody you love well, somebody you think obeyed the word of God, somebody you think you can trust upon, and they tell you all your downfall is for this man. And you know what God did? He killed, he said to Joshua, kill Achan. Not Achan only, kill his children, kill the entire village. Kill everything of his tribe. What am I trying to say to you here? Let no one who is innocent to suffer because of your greed, because of your selfishness, selfish interest, because of your what I can call stupidity. Many people lose their life not because they went to commit sin. But because the four, the four fathers did wrong and they had to go to, and God did not want that blood of Achan anymore because he knew that if he kept Achan and his children and his relatives, whatever, that blood still in them will carry on still. And God has to order that Achan and Co to be killed. So the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment is a reality. It will happen. Do not be confused or deluded or say it will never happen. It says the principal doctrine of resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment are not just important but related. It's related by our action. It's related by what we do, what we think. You remember in the Proverbs 23 verse 7, what does it say? As a man thinketh in his heart. That's the way it is. You cannot think good and do evil. It's impossible. You will always do what you are thinking. Let me give you an example. Probably uh, sisters and brothers, you who watch me at this hour, there are certain people who are in relationship with their wives and their husband, they'll be taking the money of their hands to support a family member without any other person to know. 
Make the husband and the wife to know. May I preach unto you, it is your responsibility to look after your parents, it is your responsibility also to look after the poor, those who are in need. But don't do it in hiding. Don't keep it away from your husband or from your wife. Speak. Let your husband say no and God be the witness. Let your wife say no and God be the witness. But don't go and steal and don't go and hide things and do it because I've seen a couple who used to do that today, they're no longer together. They separated. But the children are the ones suffering. And one of them has gone into trouble. Why? Because these two people were so selfish centered that they forgot the children they were having. I've always said to you if you have no children, you can do whatever you want to do, or you want to go wherever you want to go. God Himself will be the job. But since the children are there, it will also affect all of us. Because I will not fear good going to the street, seeing a child I know suffer. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So it's important that we understand resurrection and eternal judgment will take place. It is related to everyone, including you and I. We will be resurrected from the dead and judged according to our work. That's why I said to you, it's better that some of you don't pay your tithe or your offering. It's better you talk to God. Because God will ask you of all these things. If the way I am, I misuse the fire of the hands of God, God will deal with me. So that's why I feel very sorry for some of our, our pastors and apostles or prophets or evangelists misusing the fire. You need money. Bring those who are in the boat. Tell them that I need money. They don't want to see the pastor uh, living uh, unclean or, or wish he was alive. No, don't take care of the pastor. But you have to be as much open as possible so the people can take care of you. But you cannot misuse the people's trust for your own gain. Praise the name of the Lord. Because we will account of our work. And the outcome of this judgment will last for eternity. What is decided about us at this judgment will be our faith forever. The way we live, the way we talk, the way we do things, that judgment will determine where we're going to spend our eternity. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. So if you look at the 2nd Corinthians 11, look at that and say, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Can we all read together? Let me read together. Ready? Read. According to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. So therefore, watch yourself on daily basis in what you are doing. Because you give account before Christ. Mean that Christ will judge you. And Christ, because he loves us, he calls us his part. He gave us this word. So this word, we can learn it. We can read the thinking of God. And we can live the right life. Because when he comes, he will judge us. And they will not find any fault on us. Because we live according to the word of God. But if we don't read this word. With the Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 it says. Meditate this word day and night. So you may know what is the reason. For the success of your life depends on your consistency of reading this word. 
But if you are following Jesus Christ, you have no need to fear. If you have rejected Christ, you should be very afraid indeed as I'm speaking to you. There will be two serpents resurrected. We've read it in uh, uh, Revelation here. If you look at Revelation 20, he's saying that if you look at it here, he's saying that there will be a, a, no, no, I think it's in 1 Corinthians. He, he's talking about the first resurrection. And in that resurrection, it will be the first resurrection will be for the believers. And the believers will be judged by Christ. And he's advising that let it be that you are part of that first resurrection. Because Christ will first judge his own. He will first judge us before he can judge the rest of the world. That's what we call the second resurrection. The first resurrection will be us when you look at the, the Book of First Thessalonians, and here also is saying that death will be swallowed, death will sting by victory. We all there will be what we call rapture. You can ignore it, you can even say whatever you want to think, you can have your own rational, but there will be a time all of us who are those who are dead and those who are alive will be taken up to a certain level in heaven to face Christ's judgment seat. This word may not sound right to you, but it shall come to pass because the Bible is saying here, if, look at verse 52 of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15, he's saying, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last, last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptibly, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Behold, my brothers and sisters, as we are reading here, For this corruptible must put on incorruption. Mean that why do they call it corruptible? Because with this body we can see, we see with it. We see with this body. That's why they call it corruptible. But when we change in the twinkle of an eye, this body will no longer see, and this body will reign for a thousand years with Christ. So the state will become will be very difficult. For you to see. And remember, I've always said to you if you look at the Revelation chapter 9, then we are telling you look for death. There will be no death. You will go in the top of the building and throw yourself on the floor so you can die. You know that. On that day, death will be running away from you. The minute death sees you, he ran away. But now, when you want to die because of the corruption, the body will allow them to come. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The new bodies we will get will be incorruptible, will be the perfect body. They will never be sick. The body will never be hungry. And the body will never be in pain. That's why they call it incorruptible body. And it will be the glorious body. Because the glorious life who take away the sin will be with us. The first resurrection takes place after the great tribulation and before or shortly. And we shall rejoice with God for a thousand years. And this happened in the millennial reign. The millennial reign here is millennial we know is a thousand. Here, judgment is given to the believers. So the believers will see that, if you look at Revelation 20, verse 4 and 5, it says, And I saw thrones and dead, means Christians sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were 
beheaded for the witness of Jesus Christ. We, we talk, they're talking about here, you know the people were beheaded like the Stephen. He was beheaded. On that day, they will be on the throne. And the other people have, have just said to you, and who else apart, who else apart from uh, as Stephen was beheaded, who else was beheaded? James. James. Who? Paul. And who else? John the Baptist. We all know John the Baptist because we all were praying here. Every Ereliah in your life must end. Because it's the Ereliah who went to save John the Baptist and for a dance. You remember that? Because when you are promiscuous, when you have, you have no morality, you have no foundation, you will sell life for just a thing that doesn't give up. Just error the king, just for small dance, for seeing small girls dancing. He killed someone. And that will never be a portion here in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you look at the story, so, but the rest of the day, live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Behold, blessed and holy is he that had the part in the first resurrection. On such the second death had no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And the advice is here, brethren, that let the first resurrection take place. Be part of it. When the first resurrection will take place, be part of it. Because you sit before the Lord. But when the second resurrection is not guaranteed, because it will be for the unsaved, it will be for the people who are sinners, it will be the people who come from Babylon. When I'm in Babylon here, I'm in the people of the world. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. It's not got nothing to do with the Babylon in Iraq. Every Christian world shall be judged to see what sort of quality it is. It will be tried by fire. And the poor quality ones will be burnt up. For the works that remain, the believer will receive a reward. Please not. That salvation is not at stake here. If you are here, if you are in the first resurrection, you are saved. But you are etern your eternal reward are at stake because it will be judged by the quality of your work. Where quality work includes not trusting God in every area of your life, using your spiritual gift for material gain. Keeping your gift for yourself. And refusing to give up a certain manner or major sin. The result of this judgment, I tell you, that reward you get or don't get, you will have for eternity. What is saying this? If I begin to use my gift to merchandise, to trade upon, God will judge you. If I take advantage on people because I am a pastor and I take advantage on the people, God will judge me. If I begin to use my talent for my material gain, God will judge me. And God will also judge leaders in the church as you are sitting and hearing me now. Praise the name of the Lord. God will judge you also as a father and as a mother for what you have afraid to do and for what you have failed to accomplish. And those of you watching me from your home, I pray that the mothers and fathers will not fail on their duties. Because there will come a time you will give account to the Lord Jesus Christ of what you have done as a father and what you have done as a mother. Such is the case also in the resurrection of the unsaved. They will be resurrected from the dead after the millennium and judged for the evil work. These are all on the way by the lake of fire. This judgment determines the degree of punishment. If you are serial killer, it will be worse. If you are a fornicator, it will be worse. If you are a thief, it will be worse. If you are a sodomite, 
Gomorrah, it could be worse. You know the Sodom and Gomorrah? The people who have changed the desire God put upon them. You are a man, but you say, I only like men. I feel better with men. What unto you because you will pay the price? Or oh, you are a woman, say, Oh, I only like women. You will pay the price. If you look at still in that Revelation chapter 20, verse 13 and 15, he said, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the book were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their works. Brother, if you can put 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, I just want to see something. Um, it says, those who will not inherit the kingdom of God, thieves, liars, fornicators, extortioners, adulterers, these things, they will be part of the second resurrection. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Find me that piece of once you put in the screen, let me know. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to the word. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Brethren, let your record be written in the book of remembrance. When they open the book of remembrance, they will say, you see your name, they say, hey, this one is ours. Committed to serve the Lord. Promote the kingdom of God. Give all the time for the heart of God. Pray for the needy. Spare his talent, his skills, and ability for the heart of God. Went out and win souls. This is a record in the book of the living. These people will be resurrected out of hell, charred and sent to the lake of fire. See, the second resurrection is unto damnation. No one here will be found in the book of life, and this all will end up in the lake of fire. Be the one, your name will be found in the book of of the, the book of remembrance in the record of God as a good and faithful servant with the unsaved people get new bodies like the, uns the same one the question is will the unsaved get the same body as the same one that's the question it is impossible because if you look at verse 9 please if you can look at verse 9 on the screen it says, Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither for the cattle, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. The abusers of themselves here are those we call sexual immorality, the, the people who are, 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 are gay or lesbian or whatever you call them. Transsexual world. Because everything God has made is good. You remember in verse 30, the Bible says it was very good. God cannot make a mistake. The resurrection from the dead is important because it will affect you someday. You will be resurrected from the dead and judged regardless to whether you are a Christian or not. If you are a Christian, you should be living for Christ in every area of your life and not be sitting him in him. Don't be selective that I will do this because this one pleases you, you do it. And the one who doesn't please you, you don't do it. No. Either you are in or you are. Remember what we said to you? Partial obedience is what? Still disobedience. Praise the name of the Lord. Pray the name of the Lord. You should be living for Christ. Committed. Remember we prayed this morning. Proverbs 30. Proverbs 11 verse 30. He said, the wise will always win souls for the house of God. How many of us are winning souls for the house of God? Let it be a point of duty. 
that I want to win somebody for the Lord. Amen. Bring somebody in the house of the Lord. Someone's lost. Bring them back. And God will reward you for that. Amen. I'm about to close. If you are not saved, you need to get saved so that you can take part in the first resurrection instead of the second. Now, brothers, I'm saying this all, those of you watching me from home. Look at the brother, if you look at the Judges chapter 2, verse 10. This is where I'm closing about the Christian foundation. I have said all this about repentance, about faith, about baptism, laying on of hand, resurrection, and eternal, because I don't want any generation after us to forget to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we want the generation after us to serve the Lord. As we the parent are serving the Lord. Let's look at the screen. On the screen there is said, and also that the generation were gathered unto their fathers, and then arose another generation after them. Look at this. Which knew not the Lord. Our children shall know the Lord. I decree our children shall know the Lord. Our children shall serve the Lord. Our children shall be mad about the Lord. There shall be a thing for the kingdom of God. Because if we don't do that, this will be one of the biggest injustices we will do to our children. And our children will also love to do the work of the Lord. Yeah. They will be on Sunday, on Monday, on Tuesday, whenever the day that the, the, ministry, the ministry is planning, they will be always there to serve the Lord. Amen. May the Lord be glorified. Amen. May you be a champion wherever you are. May you be a victorious person wherever you are. Wherever you are, you will follow the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I've just come to the end of my ministration this morning. But I just want to say to you before I go, I want to give you the opportunity. If you heard here, if you are not born again, seize this moment. If you are backsliding or if you are going to look at seize this moment. For where there's a Christ, there's a fullness of joy. And where there's no Christ, there's a crisis. I want to give you the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and make a decision today as you hear about this foundation, Christian foundation, that you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. All you have to do, please say this a few words after me. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that you are the eternal Son of God. I believe that you died and rose again. And I believe that you are sitting on the right hand of the Father. And I believe that you are interceding for me. Pray for me, O Lord, so I may be forgiven of my sins. And I make a decision to repent today. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That's it, brothers. Nothing else to, to add. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are the just who live by faith. Find yourself a church based ministry, a church faith based ministry. Begin committed to it. Be consistent, and you shall surely receive the reward. God bless you and we see you Thursday uh, at 7.30 and uh, our, uh, our techniques will uh, get in touch with you uh, to make sure that you have uh, the, the word for the day. But please share also this word through uh, your Facebook or, or our YouTube. You can also go to our, our website account www.hopccbasil.com Share the word, hear this word over and over so it will admonish you. And I wish you all the best as you commit yourself on this foundation. And the Lord bless you.